Pashas ki seitze sheni. Sheni starts off, v'chiyye be'ish chet mishpat maves, v'humas v'salisa oisa aleitz. If a man's going to commit a sin, we're going, to com- we're, we're going to put him to death, and we're going to hang him on a tree. So Rashi mentions, why is this uh, mentioned right after the Ben Sarah the Parsha Ben Sarah And Rashi says, well, this is the natural progression of things. If uh, in the, in the Ben Sarah the parents are supposed to bring the child to base them, but what happens if those parents have Rachmanis on the child? You know, it's, it's their son. It's perfectly natural and normal. They don't want their son to be to be punished, to Malchus, and then eventually to be killed. But that kind of Rachmanis is, 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 is not very good. Because what happens if you don't punish such a child? Whenever you let any child uh, do anything without without giving them proper uh, a reprimand or the proper Musr, they just get worse and worse. And what happens to the Mitzvah who doesn't get killed? He becomes a murderer. He becomes a killer. He commits capital offenses. And this is the guy who has to, who based and has to put to death. And he has to get hanged on a tree. Um, then the, uh, there's a little bit of, a, of an explanation. What does it mean he's hanging on a tree? The Pusik seems to suggest that he dies by hanging. We know that's not true. We don't do any of that. But we do have Skila. And Rashi explains that after Skila, they hang the body. And uh, what they do is, is they stone him right before nightfall. And then they take the body down because it's, it's a G'nai. Rashi says, because we're created in Hashem's image, it's a G'nai. For, for Hashem's image, so to speak, to be hanging on a tree. So they do it right before nightfall, and of course they take him down, they bury him right away. Um, then, the Aliyah continues, what happens if you find something, uh, an animal, that belongs to your friend, or to uh, to another Yid? You're not allowed to pretend that you can't see it, right? Uh, very often that happens, if there's an accident, we all run away, I didn't see anything, I'm not a witness, right? But the Torah says you can't do that. You can't pretend that you don't see it. You have to take responsibility for it. It might involve a lot of work. And uh, the Gemara says there are three examples of people who are who who, who are exempt from this. One being a kain, if the item or the animal is in a cemetery, kain is not allowed to become tummy. If uh, a tamid chacham or a uh, very famous or distinguished elderly person, it'd be a little bit embarrassing for him to bend down, pick it up. Or the third example. Um, if the loss is going to be greater than the benefit, right? Rashi says, that's where we learn the rule, kal davar sha'asa if anything that can eat, we let it eat. For example, if the animal uh, produces milk, fur, something like that, we use it and we sell it, and that way it pays for itself. And anything that does it, v'she'ena asa v'aychal, then you're allowed to sell it. Um, the Gemara talks about Rabbi Kanina ben Daisa, a very famous story, which just gives us a little food for thought, and I'll explain what I mean. Rabbi Kanina ben Daisa found chickens. The chickens started uh, multiplying, and it was, uh, and he just couldn't take care of the chickens. So he sold the chickens, and he bought goats. And then the owner of the chickens arrived, and he was confused. He said, but I lost chickens. And Rabbi Kanina ben Daisa says, yes, but now you have goats. Can you imagine uh, Rabbi Kanina ben Daisa he took care of somebody else's item so well that now the guy came back. He didn't have chickens anymore. He had goats, much more valuable. Um, also, the, the Aliyah talks about if you see an animal falling under a burden, right, then you have to help lift it. And we learn how to, you have to lift it, and we learn how two lessons, two, two very important lessons. Rashi, first of all, tells us, what does it mean? It means when the owner is loading the animal, and then the animal falls over. So obviously its packages have fallen over. It's our job to go over and lift up the animal and lift up the packages because it belongs to somebody. It belongs to a fellow yid. You have to help him out. As opposed to when, we, when we've when we seen this, this uh, mitzvah before, we said if an animal is struggling under a burden, that's when the owner is, is taking things off. This Rashi explains is when the, is when the owner is putting things on. The second lesson that, Ra, that, that we learn out that Rashi points out is that if you want to, if you're going to go help this person and the person says, oh, it's your mitzvah to go do it. Go ahead, you go do it. I'll just sit back and relax. Rashi says, you're exempt.